Well, everyone, we are back for another episode of Father Knows Something. I'm Jerry, and of course, we all know Justin. <laughs> and some of us might even remember Holly. Yes, Holly is our is our little one. Um, last week was a great show. I truly enjoyed having your pop on. That was a good time. It really was fun. I look forward to many more, and I think so does the audience. Yeah, we have to. Uh, he might he might take it over, and we'll be his guest. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, tonight, uh, I want to thank Jordan for the socks that celebrate England and the UK. Um, and the only reason why she got them through is because she's Morgan's best friend, and so that was great that she, uh, or one of her best friends, and it was great that she got them in. But I also want to remember, I have very good friends in London, Austria, that watched the show, Georgie and her husband, Les. Hey, guys. And uh, and her and our other friend, Brigida. Wonderful. Yeah. So we are getting around the world, and as far as I see stuff from Australia and back on the other side of the pond and us in the middle. I also want to take a, uh, a second just that we all uh, that we uh, all take in consideration and our thoughts for, and prayers for the Ukraine and the people of it. Just hope that we come up with a successful, uh, that they're able to stave off this tyranny that they're going through and um, that things work out. So I, I know our, our prayers are with you. Truly, and, and for the Russian people, we know it's not you. We know it's simply someone that's in your presidency that is looking just to go mad and, dis, and dis, not only destroy your way of life, but other people's way of life for whatever his own, his own agenda is. So we know that uh, you guys are suffering with it. All right. What do you got? Anything? We are going to jump right in okay. with an update. Hey, Jerry. I've written in before to your podcast about my situationship friend who was about to leave. You told me to give it time because that and the distance would really help clarify a lot for me. I remember listening to the episode, hearing my story come on, and just bawling in my little office cubicle. Not because I was sad, but because hearing you tell me that it would be a good thing was something a lot of other people had glossed over when empathizing with me. It meant a lot to me then and now. Well, here's the update that no one asked for. We did. We asked for the update. Yeah, we did. He left in November, right after you talked about my story. I had my cry when it happened, but after about a week, I started to feel normal again. Now it's been almost four months without him, and I've never felt better. Your advice was my mantra throughout the hard moments of him being gone. I miss what the good parts were, but I realized after a while that I didn't miss him. I haven't talked about this with a lot of people, but my therapist helped me realize that he was gaslighting me to the point where I hesitated talking to even her about it. Now that the distance is there, I've never felt more free. I'm rediscovering who I am without someone dictating my life. I'm meeting new friends, started some new hobbies, and I even got a promotion in January. Congrats. My life is going so well, and time and space were really the best I could have asked for. Thanks so much, Jerry. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful to hear how you're healing. And, and time does let things heal. And if something is going to uh, turn out when, when, you, when you allow yourself to heal and that person does come back or something else in your life, you're open and you're much healthier uh, to have a relationship because you're comfortable within yourself now. So congratulations. I'm glad to hear it. It's good to hear back. We, uh, we love the updates. We do. All right, now we're getting into it. Okay. I don't really have a, a very clear theme. We just kind of found some of the best ones that have come in recently, and we're just going for it. Okay. Okay. So my boyfriend's brother is super creepy. He has very light footsteps and always has a huge smile on his face after getting a reaction out of someone. He also just has no boundaries. 
I've caught him on multiple occasions sneaking a peek into my bedroom, either by walking to the door, then leaving once I start to notice him there, or by an even creepier way. I have a dresser with a mirror right next to, the, to my side of the bed. In the spot that I sit, if you look in the mirror, you can see right into the hallway, specifically the door to the hallway bathroom. I've caught him several times even making eye contact, so he's purposely looking in that mirror to see what I'm doing on my bed. He comes in my room, never knocking, even if I am fresh out of the shower in my towel, while I'm getting dressed and just in a bra and underwear, even as my boyfriend and I are having sex. He knocked only one time when I had the door shut and we were the only ones home, but he opened the door right after he knocked, not even waiting for me to tell him it was okay to come in. I've told my boyfriend about it and he just agrees that his brother is creepy, but never anything more than that's weird. My boyfriend thinks I should be the one to confront him because it's affecting me only. What should I do and or how should I confront it? Side note. I live with them in their family home, so I get nervous because I don't feel I have a place to say anything as I am basically just a visitor. Okay. So here is, here's where I'm at on this. And your boyfriend has a 20% uh, correctness on that one. But here's another thing. He, he has to guarantee and always watch out for your safety, as you would always have his back and watch out for his safety. And this is not about being creepy. This is about being safe. This guy is obviously weird, simply. And that, be, that being said, if no one's going to protect you and you can't protect yourself from this guy, then the only person that has the power is you. And you'll just say, you know something? I'm not going to stay here. I'm going to get my own place. And you need to get out of there. If no one's going to give you the respect that you're entitled to, privacy and safety, then you don't belong there. You got to get your ass out of there. Simple. So what would you say if she doesn't have the ability to leave? Well, she, everyone has the ability to leave him. But what if she lives there because she doesn't have other options? Then how would you... She can certainly talk to you know talk to to the brother, and say I see you doing it. I don't like it and you know obviously stand up for herself and I think that's a great idea, but ultimately if he's going to continue to do it even after that being said she's got to get the fuck out of there if no one's going to help her no one's going to protect her from this then she has to protect herself or her boyfriend wants to come you know visit her wherever she is that's great but she's not she doesn't have to live there yeah. You know, her and her, her and her boyfriend can go find, you know, figure something else out. It's, it's, all, it's all down to how important it is to them for her, for her safety. Yeah. I mean, her ideal outcome is I just want to feel like I have privacy in a place I am supposed to call home. Yeah. She can't go complain to the parents, but she can certainly talk to her, her boyfriend and he can see to it or she has to, she can take on the, the brother, but. You know, at the end of the day, he has an obligation since he brought her into this home to make sure that she is safe. Yeah, once you think like the brother walks in you having, and you and her having sex, wouldn't you be like, dude? Like, once you start, what, I think any anybody with any common sense would say, yeah, dude. <laughs> like, what's happening? Why is this a thing? Especially yeah. then if she comes to you and says, "Oh, he does this all the time, even when you're not here." This is just not acceptable behavior. Yeah. So, right. we, and again, we don't know who's a big brother, who's a little brother. It doesn't really matter. The, the, the matter is, is that they are, there's no respect going on in this home. Yeah. She doesn't belong there. True. So, I mean, you can, we can find excuses for all kinds of other, you know, reasoning and, and, and scenarios, but I'm just going down to basics. This is, I think that's what you have to do. This is bad. Yeah, you just don't want to see it evolve to anything crazy. I mean, I mean, I mean, what what would happen if if the, the sick brother is is uh, 
is stalking the mother's room or sister's room or somebody's other room, that wouldn't have been permitted. They would be, that family would be all over it. Dad would be all over the little, the, you know, his son. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. So the same goes for her. She, she's entitled to that same respect. And if she's not going to get it, again, bug out. Yeah, I agree. Don't become the show. Okay. Okay. Number two. <laughs> Hi, Dad, Jerry. Hi. I need some outside advice. My sister and I have had an iffy relationship that has just been going downhill since high school, and my wedding is next summer. Do I have her be part of my wedding party? My sister, 22 female, and I, 20 female, have had a rocky relationship since we were kids. She would physically bully me, and I would verbally bully her. All was done carefully out of my mother's hearing, of course. The first year of high school, my sister ran away to live with the guy she'd met over the summer. She announced her unexpected, unwanted pregnancy close to midnight after a play she didn't even bother coming to. She met her now fiancé and left her baby with us during nap time without telling us they were leaving. After a series of lies to distance herself from us and moving in with her fiancé, we hardly ever see her unless she wants or needs something. I'm sick of a half-assed relationship on her side. In early wedding plans of my own, before things got really bad, she overheard me allude to the idea that she might be one of my bridesmaids. I wasn't engaged yet and haven't talked to her about it yet, but I'm so sick of her BS and I don't want someone supporting me on the most important day of my life when she is only in it for her own benefit. How do I tell her I don't want her in my bridal party, but I do want to have her at the wedding? Pure directness. Let me lay it out for you. It is not uncommon, especially with sisters within two years, to have sister rivalry. Man, I lived it in, 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 growing up in, in our house. My sisters were two years apart. <laughs> and I will tell you, that it is an interesting dynamic. Um, and many women that I've went out with throughout, you know, there's that dynamic. I think if you sit her down and just say, you know, I really want to uh, have a discussion with you because I am going to have my day and I want you to be at my day, but I don't have a confidence level right now that my day is going to go smooth with the, with the interactions that you're doing right now. And I don't know if, if you're just going through a mood because of things in your life, but I just need to know that, A, you are fully prepared um, to do part A or just do part B, but you need to be honest with me. Tell me what you, you are prepared for should I make this decision to help me make my decision that you are either going to be in the wedding party. There's no doubt I want you to be at the wedding, but I just can't deal with any drama that day. I mean, it sounds like it's gotten to the point where she just does not want her a part of the party. Right. I got it. And so it's like, how do you tell someone like, yeah, I want you there, but not I think, in this room. I, I think by going into the, into the thing, into the conversation where you said, I'm not going to deal with any drama. You're giving her the opportunity to say, and you didn't say, I'm going to have you in there. What she did, I, what, I was clear. And I said, I just want to be able to put this in my head. If this, what's going to be the best decision for me, I'm going to, I'm going to plan this out. But if I choose not to have you there it, as in the wedding party, it's simply because I don't have the confidence that I'm not going to have drama. Right. So you can lay that out. And that way you're just not going there, going to her and saying, you just, you know, I don't want you in my wedding party. Because that is an assault. And you don't want to assault her. You want to, you know, be one step above her as being a lady as you. I've always said in, in all the conversations from my first time on this show, you got it, you got to take it with true um Elegance. Elegance. And a wedding is elegant. 
Uh, yes, it is. It's the peak of your of, of, of your day. So you want to really handle yourself as a lady, yet you want to be firm and you want to be, uh, you know, totally candid. And you got to do it right. You got to do it with, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. It's tone. Yeah. Watch your tone when you do this. Watch your words. Watch your choice. Watch the conversation. If you lead the conversation correctly, she can say, look, this is what's going on. She may come up with, you know, God, I'm just having issues that you're getting married before I got married. She may not, she may not even want to say that. But there might be other things that are going on. We just don't know what's in her mind. Right. She might surprise you. Or she might flip out. How have you handled that? How do you handle when you when you are the one being candid and you are sitting down and being the... And they flip out? Yeah. You have to just say, we're going to postpone it for right now. We're, we'll come back to this. No, you're going to do it right now. You don't have a willing participant. Yeah. I had this happen with someone close to me and my family um, not long ago. And they were not willing to accept that I'm not going to talk about it right now. And I just said, you'll have the conversation with yourself. I'm not, I'm not participating right now. There's a, there's a party going on. There's other people here. We're not going to ruin anyone else's time. But we will continue this. Yeah. And, the, and, and I stayed cool. The cooler I was, the more aggravated the other person got. And I just said, this is why we're not doing it. Right, because nothing positive can That's be correct. accomplished so you, you, you got to keep your shit together you can't let her trigger you it is so important that you hold yourself focused you breathe you must breathe in and breathe out you you got to pace yourself you just can't let yourself run away and then maybe i don't know maybe if it's that bad if it is that bad then maybe she chooses not to come that's it. But then you'll feel better with that than having her stand up there with you when you don't want it. I, I am sure that this will work out. Uh, you're, you're, this is not the first bride that has had this with her sister. Yeah. It, it, this is a textbook event. <laughs> I would say. You are not alone. I would. We have seen all kinds of stuff when it comes to sisters and their way. But look, we've done shows on this. I don't know if it was on my show or Morgan's show where the sisters were going at it and, and arguing over who's going to have theirs first and went date. And I remember that one, this, yeah. This is just sibling bullshit and just hold yourself above all that. Yeah. Let, and... us, let us know, like the, the, our first write-in got back to us, let us know how you're doing. That's right. All right, we're rolling right along. Mm -hmm. All right. Hello, Jerry, Justin, and Morgan. <laughs> love the podcast and you make me feel encouraged to do stuff i would never dream about thank you so much for everything you are welcome thank uh, you for thank you for listening to us yes thank you i am a 20 year old female i need advice on how do you ask for a raise in salary to give you a little backstory, I work in the equestrian industry. I know Morgan will be excited to know this. Oh, you bet. In fact, look right here. <laughs> That's right. I am a professional dressage rider and work for my godfather who owns a stable. I ride six to nine horses per day and train kids in the afternoons, so I work nine hours a day. Currently, I am being paid approximately $200 a month for the horse work plus maybe $200 for the training sessions with my kids. I live in a Latin country, and this is barely enough to cover my gas to go to work and home and grooming stuff for my horses and my own training with a professional coach. So my question is, how can I ask my godfather to pay me more without sounding ungrateful and feeling bad about it? I have a coworker, male and older than me, who gets paid more, and the stable covers all the expenses for training and competition when he only works three days a week? Well, I think the most important thing, I, I look at working for someone and, and having someone work for me as an opportunity on both parties. And you're just not doing 
him a favor. He's doing you a favor. But also, you're giving him legitimate work, and he's trying to appreciate your work by giving you legitimate pay. Obviously, you're finding out that financially it's not working. So you first thing that you need to do is find out what it really takes for you to do the things you need to do. And you then, um, you can do a couple of things. You can look at what work would be outside and what else you can make somewhere else. Or, and or, just go to him and say, I, I, love, I love my job. I love working for you. But financially, this is not working to, to, to support with everything that I'm doing. Yeah. And I want to give you the opportunity before I have to go out and look for other work and I can't work here anymore to, to pay, give me a greater compensation of whatever that, that number will be. That number may be a dollar more a year. It may be $2,000, $3,000, $4,000 a year. Whatever that number is, you have to give him the opportunity in a nice way to say, you know, I can't do that, or gee, I'm, I'm glad. I see where you're coming from. I'm glad to do it right. because you, if you've been there for a certain amount of time, he now sees your work ethic. He now sees what you what, what you can perform and what you can make him, and he can then make that decision on his own. Can I afford to pay her that money and still make money? Right. So this is about opportunity for you an opportunity for him. And don't look at that you're being mean to say, I need more money. People need money. People have to eat. Everyone recognizes that. Mm -hmm. And you're not evil because you need more money to do, to eat because I'm sure it sounds like you, you have a very dialed in, a very focused life. You're, you're training horses. You're doing this. It's not like you're running around <laughs> partying during the day and right. you know, you're being responsible. So... I would I would just pencil out what you what you really need and be fair to yourself. Don't discount yourself. Be fair to yourself. Yeah. And give him the opportunity to say I can or cannot do that, and either have an idea of what you can get somewhere else, and or that way you know that if he says I can't help you, you can say you know I really love you, but I can't continue. I I, I need I haven't I, I I have to go work at another place because I can't do the gas. I can't do all this. It right. just doesn't work for me. And then he'll understand. He will not be angry because you've been totally upfront and you've been, most importantly, you've been honest and direct. For sure. Never be afraid to, to stick up for yourself. I, I have clients that, and that I used to give certain services to. And since COVID, I cannot afford to do that. My, my business went zero. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally went flat. And so now, you know, COVID is kind of rolling by and people are starting to engage. And I got calls of, to do things that, you know, typically I wouldn't call, you know, charge for. Now I said, gee, I'd like to help you out, but I need to be compensated for that, that hour or two or three to, you know, take a drive in traffic for an hour each way and, yeah. and gas it, you know, I live in LA, so it's five and a half dollars, six dollars a gallon to go come out to you. I need need to be paid. And one person said, oh, I, I, I don't know, I have to find out. And so they disappeared for two weeks. And sure enough, they called back and, <laughs> and they said, all right, we'll pay you. Yeah, yeah. So you, you just have to be honest about it. I, I have, to, you know, what do they say? A dog's got to eat and a bird's got to fly. You know, it's, that's the way it works. I haven't so, heard that one. So it's true, dog's got to eat. <laughs> And a bird's got to fly. <laughs> but then, there we go. Anyway, so uh, let us know how it works for you. And the reason why we ask, let, why I ask, let me know how it works for people. I'd like to know if I give you good advice. If my if my brain is tuned and my radar is correct, because sometimes my radar isn't always on. So that's why I ask. Have you ever been asked for a raise? Yeah. Oh, you bet. I had 150 employees. I was asked for raises every day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure in a variety of ways too. Um, but this would be the most effective way to approach. Yeah, it works. It works. I mean, I had, you know, some of my workers I, that I had were 
unbelievably committed to the cause. It wasn't about the money. It was about doing the job. Yet I always made sure that they were compensated fully for everything. Yeah. Some of my employees, I paid more than I paid myself in the business. It was not uncommon for that. Yeah. I wanted this place to, this business to work. And, and unfortunately, at the end of the day, I had, you know, five guys that were fantastic. And I had 40, 145 people that were only out for the money. And they weren't really out for the, for, for the, you know, the quest we were taking. Needless to say, uh, you know, new chapter. Yeah. And you learn. But don't be afraid to, to present it that way. If you, if you come in with honesty and, and integrity, it will, it will work for you. Let me know. Yes, we wish you the best. Okay. Have we strapped in yet? Do I need to put my seatbelts on? Harnesses? You got a big one? Um, yeah. Time to strap in a little bit. Do I need a parachute too? <laughs> uh, no, save the parachute for okay. a little bit. Okay. Hi, Jerry. Looking for an outside perspective on this. I, 29 female, am currently in a long distance relationship with 29 male. And we plan on moving in together, possibly in a city new to us both, within the year. My issue, however, is my dad, 67 male. We lost my mom two years ago, and my dad doesn't take care of himself. He won't see a doctor, only eats frozen meals or takeout, works manual labor six days a week, is experiencing memory loss, etc. My brother and sister-in-law live halfway across the country, and that's really the only family I have, so I take care of my dad a lot. I stay there some weekends, about an hour and a half away, make sure he takes his meds, knows what to do if his sugar levels are too high, low, etc. I fear that if I move, he really won't take care of himself, but I also need to prioritize my future, including my relationship. I feel like I'm stuck here and don't know how to balance moving on with my life while also caring for him. Any advice? Well, I'm right at that same age. I don't always remember everything that's going on. And I probably don't need the, the, um, a lot of the, the medical needs. That your sounds like your dad's almost borderline diabetic is what I'm, I'm getting to feel. I'd like to say, you know, do your life, he'll be fine. But there's obviously, there, there's a reason why you're concerned. Um, I know that when my mom was aging, I, 20 years before that, some, when that represented me in my insurance said, buy, you know, long-term care. <laughs> Yeah. Health care for your mom, you know, mm-hmm. at home care. And when we had an issue, thank God I had that because it, it, it worked for two and a half years. She had round-the-clock care. Right. And a lot of the stuff that you're going through, I didn't have that issue. We knew we, we had a team of people to, that insurance that we had pre-purchased worked. Right. It was fantastic. Right. You know, you're at this point now that obviously if that was the case, we wouldn't be having this discussion. So it's hard to turn your, your, your back on, on your father. You can certainly um, manage, your, manage a conversation with your dad. And this just came to my mind because this is a, a, something that in a relationship that I had not too long ago, we put cameras in the house. We had um, voice right over the camera with speakers. Mm-hmm. So she could see her mom. No matter what was going on, right. we could see it and we could start talking to her, right? Whatever it was. So we yeah. could interact without going to the telephone. And it made life kind of easy. We were able to, and sometimes, I mean, she wouldn't even know we were watching. We were, we were watching, you know, how she made her dinner, what she, you know, not to evade any real privacy, but we wanted to make sure she was eating. You know, what was yeah, the it's out of care. Yeah. And you can do that. And you can do, we did it from, from LA to New York. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And we would crack up sometimes because she was so cute. And she would, you know, up. Oh, she's reading the paper. She's doing the cross. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, and honestly, that also helps you, keep a little company too. If like you can always check back in. And today, in these days, with FaceTime and all these mm-hmm. things, I mean, I have gotten grandparents to learn how to be able to like video call and all that. that and, that's all good. But this is where it it did two things. 
it actually made her feel better that she knew her mom was okay just by watching how oh, she for was sure. functioning. And so this will help you function if you live four hours, five hours, uh, you know, two states away. You're kind of able to see what's going on. And yeah, you probably want to put a backup plan of if something happens or someone you can call you know, that, that can actually, you know, react. Sure. But it's amazing. I just totally, this all came back to me. Yeah. There, no, that's a there, good there's strategy. There's enough stuff. There's enough stuff in electronics today that can save you to help you with this. And you can still interact with him daily. And you can be over wherever you are and having your own life and building your own family. Yeah. And then you can decide later that, you know, look, it might get to the part where he's not working. Look, he's working every day, six days a week. He's still getting up and going to work. He's not an invalid. So, so what if, though, yeah. I'm looking at the ideal outcome here. Okay. Ideally, I'd like my dad to be able to move closer to either myself or my brother. Mm -hmm. But he refuses the idea, saying he'll have trouble finding a job and doesn't have enough savings to retire with. He's very much set in his ways, and I fear any change will cause more issues. This woman that I was talking about, I got I to gotta go back to this. Yeah. This woman was, was, was uh, not early dementia, but she was having vascular disease. She would lose shit half the I mean, time. If she didn't keep herself balanced, she just... Yeah. It would be gone. I mean, we were worried about her walk, you know, walking the streets of New York and getting lost. Right. So the decision was made, fly back, go get her, bring her home. She's going to live here from this point forward. She brought her back here, <laughs> put her in her home. And that lasted about three weeks before the woman says, I'm out of here. I'm going back to my house. Fuck you guys. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, it was like, well, fine, go back to New York. If you drop dead, I don't want to know about her. <laughs> it, oh, was, geez. it was all this shit. And I, and I guarantee you that woman was so, so strong-headed, so strong-willed that she is probably still back in New York and she's probably still doing her thing and and plugging along just fine. I mean, like I said, the cameras are in place. Yeah, I think that's smart. It, it all works out. So uh, if you guys find out at a later time that you can afford to have your dad come move in with you or, or come nearer and you can pull that off, you can find it, you can help him set up. Remember, this is this is his life. He is comfortable in his in his existence, going to this job six days a week. He's comfortable seeing his friends. He's comfortable doing all that. Yeah. And you want to pluck pluck him away from that. That's almost like death itself. Yeah. So you got to be careful with that. At least he has the structure too that he does go off and work six days a week. I mean, it's not like he's just rotting away, like letting everything fall apart. It. That's I think that's a that's a good point. Yeah, it's the healthiest thing for him is continuing on as long as he can do his thing and leave him alone. Watch him through the cameras, communicate with him, let him know you're there, and if you see something that's that's really changing, you'll deal with it at that time. You're not True. there yet. You're you're still a little premature. So focus on your life, go enjoy it, do it, and I, that's what I, I. That's my thoughts. Now, yeah. Again, no, that makes a lot of sense. I, I will. I will reiterate this. I do not have a degree. I have just got a DAD degree and a and a degree in being a human being, and that is what I see. And the last thing you want to do is strip him from being himself. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, love that. Let us again say it with me. Let us know. Let us know. Okay, we're cruising. We're flying. Roll it, roll it. I had to put seatbelts on for that one. I think I was just getting you prepared. Oh. You know, it's better to be safe than sorry, right? Okay. Okay. This one is an interesting one. Oh, I don't I think we've hit this topic yet. Okay. Hey, Jerry, Morgan, and Justin. I'm writing in about an issue with a previous partner. We were together for six years. I broke things off with him nearly three years ago. We were close for seven months after the breakup, but then cut things off for good after he was very emotionally manipulative and abusive. He has now come back into my life asking for possessions back from me that we shared when we lived together. He has things we bought together at his house too. Does he have a right to demand things from me? He is asking for the more expensive items, but doesn't want reimbursement for anything else. 
We split the cost together on most things, and a lot of what we paid for is in my name. What would you do in this situation? My parents agree that it's been too long now to start demanding these things from me, given the fact I haven't asked to divide things in return. What is the right thing to do, especially as we weren't married and didn't have a written agreement? Well, the first thing that came to my head is that I've had some relationships that we kind of lived together or we may have been hanging out a lot together. And and there are a few relationships I don't talk to the person anymore. <laughs> and there are items that are no longer in my possession that I would just have there to help when we were doing stuff. And I, and Morgan said to me the other day, do you have a late, where's the label machine? I said, oh, that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there are times that you just walk away and whatever's there, write it off. But he's coming back now. Oh, like no, they he, literally he, haven't talked in three years. Right. He, he's and he's coming back to say, yo, can I get this back, this back, this well, back? Well, I'm, sure I'm certain that I can go make a phone call and say, gee, can I have my label machine back? Yeah. And, <laughs> Well, he is. Yeah. So the point is, is that, um, you know, is this is up to you. If if you want to, if there's something there that you want to give him back, say, you know something, we bought this stuff during our relationship. It's part of this home. Bought it together. We did this. It's you know, come on. Yeah. Be real. I mean, if if you want to give him something, say, look, I'll give you this, this, and this, and the rest I'm keeping. And go on your way. What What is the most important item to you? And you'll say, I'll see if that's important to me or not. This is this is a choice. This is a decision. I mean, it's right because there's no there's no legal thing saying, hey, I have a right to these things. Right now, do I really think he cares about the crap? I think he's just trying to manipulate his way back in your life to see what's going on. And this is just a, they're just a tool. That's all it is. That is true. Her ideal outcome is coming to an understanding and figuring out what is best to do in this situation, especially as none of it is legally binding. This has, not, this has nothing to do with legality. This is, where do you want this relationship to go? Do you care if you guys talk and you guys can maintain a friendship? Tell it. I mean, I have some stuff that I, that from an old relationship that I have put away because there was no room at her place for it. And I knew one day it would come in handy and Gee, I have it. I never threw it out. And if she ever needs it and she's and she called, I would say, sure, come get it. It's yours. Yeah. I don't give a shit, but I yet I'm a nice enough guy where it is. It's not bugging anybody. It's not in my way. So I mean, he is asking for the uh the more expensive items. He's trying to secure the bag. Well, keep the TV and give him back the vibrator. <laughs> <laughs> like that. There's a, that's another t-shirt that we will make. <laughs> keep, the, keep the TV, <laughs> give them back the vibrator. You know, this is, again, the, I, I can't tell you what to keep and what to give back. I mean, this is, this is about your own integrity, dignity, what you feel is right, what you feel is, what's important to you. Look, a TV today, if he wants the TV, let me tell you something. After three years, the new stuff is better. Look, I'm... <laughs> I'm trying to keep an old TV. My daughter's making me get rid of She's bribing me to get rid of it. The new stuff is better. That's a good lesson for you directly. You just gave yourself <laughs> advice. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so I wish I could give you better advice in this, but I think that the reality is this is, I think there's other things at play here. And um, most definitely, you know, it's all about how your relationship ended within you and what you feel. And you can't be manipulated by him. This is all about you. It's, it sounds like manipulation once again. That's right. Especially because that was happening in the past. That's correct. Oh, my leg. A little sore. You see, guys, this is what happens when you get older. Anyway. Yeah. I'm, I don't, I'm not looking forward to being sore. Okay. This next one is our longest one of the evening. And we're just going to go for it. Okay. All right. I'm ready. Hi, Jerry. I love your podcast. I lost my dad in high school, and it is so comforting to hear some dad advice. I am dealing with what I would consider a quite wholesome problem and would just love your thoughts. Okay. At the end of 2021, I, 22 female, and my husband, 25 male, moved to a new town out of state. 
Instead of finding a new full-time job right away, I'm trying to grow my small business. I'm an artist. So for now, I recently got a part-time job at a local coffee shop as a barista. I started right after the new year and absolutely love it. This is my new second location for the company, so quite a few others were hired around the same time as me. We all hit it off and quickly became friends. Another person we all quickly became friends with is our assistant manager, Sam. Sam is everyone's favorite, even the customers. He's in his 50s, has an adorable husband with like four dogs, does pottery in his free time, and gives us all Mr. Rogers vibes, sweater vest and all. (laughs) He was actually the one who did my interview, and we have a ton of the same hobbies like yoga, dogs, music, taste, etc., Our whole little coffee shop crew gets along great, and I genuinely love going to work there. I was really involved with a yoga studio back home, and I missed it a lot. Since I'm new to the area, I was asking one of my coworkers about yoga studios because I know she also does yoga. She suggested the place where Sam is also an instructor. Not thinking much of it, Lily and I, Lily's a coworker, signed up for a class next week that he's teaching. I called my best friend from back home after work just to catch up. I mentioned this new yoga studio I couldn't wait to try, especially since I will know some people there. When she asked who I said my coworker, Lily, and that my manager, Sam, was actually the instructor, she flipped out. She said it was weird to be spending time with an old guy and that he was just abusing his power as my boss. I was so stunned and trying to lighten the mood. I said, Sam is a 50-year-old man with a husband. I don't think I'm his type. She just scoffed and said, whatever. You know what you're doing to your husband. Ouch. I know that I'm not doing anything wrong, but what she said really hurt for some reason. I told my husband, and he doesn't see anything wrong with me literally just going to yoga, but now I'm second-guessing myself. Is this really weird? Am I being totally naive, or am I just making friends in the adult way now that I'm out of school? This feels like such a dumb thing to write in about since I know I didn't actually do anything, but I would love a dad's perspective on this. Thanks so much. This is this is the tough one you were going to give me? The up and the down? It's just more of like a, a... like a. We don't know where we're going to end up. This is so easy. Go to yoga. Enjoy it. You have a friendship with Sam. You're in a small town, sounds like, with a small community. People get along. Your, Your husband is totally cool with this. Your girlfriend, I don't know where her radar is, but... It's... It, I yeah, think, it doesn't I, make sense. I, I think her radar is like this off the millennium. Go enjoy yourself. Have fun. And I don't see anything wrong with this at all. And if, and if, I'm, and if I am your dad, take dad's advice. Go, go enjoy. The reason I was, this one stood out, it just because I wanted to see what your advice is for people that totally 100% have these weird problems, sometimes mm-hmm. more real problems, but mm-hmm. these weird things where this is obviously a friend from back home that she trusts mm-hmm. and has a good friendship with. So apply this to many different situations all around the world with a bunch of different people. What would you tell people who literally will start second guessing themselves and really start questioning and start changing? Because I think that's the bigger issue here. It's not the fact of this yoga thing, but it's more... You well, have the, people the, in your the, life the, that can... This friend uh, obviously has, has a place in her life where she, where she listens to some of... Look, the woman that I, uh, that I see now has friends that she's relied upon for the last five years. And she told me some things about herself within the first day or two of, of, of knowing each other. It just... We just had an open line of communication, and she felt comfortable enough with, with who I am to tell me things. Now, what, do I think that some people would take advantage of some of the things she said? Absolutely. But she had enough confidence in me to know that I wouldn't. And when she told some of her girlfriends what she said, they got mad at her, and it hurt her. And I said, I see they want to protect you, 
And I certainly didn't bash her girlfriends. But I said, and I could see their reasoning, but I'm glad that you had your instinct to know that we could be ha have transparency with one another. And yeah, you hear things and stories that are goofy and weird, but you also have to trust your own judgment. You have to trust yourself. You can't, you can't depend upon everyone else to make these choices and decisions for you. Decisions from friends, choices from friends, opinions from friends, it's all good, but that's what it is. It's an opinion. You must go sit back, listen to yourself, and go with your own judgment. And from what you have said on this one, I think that you've just dialed yourself in and it makes me smile and I'm happy yep. for you. And I mean, if you've met Sam's husband, I'm, I, I, I'm sure she, I think she's met Sam's husband. Yeah, it seems like the whole the whole crew out there is pretty close. So. Yeah, it sounds like there's a lot of there's, there's a lot of just straightforward reality. And yeah, I'd say go enjoy. Don't don't doubt yourself. And as far as answer your question, my my answer is go with your own gut feeling. Listen to people, process their information, listen to their what ifs, see what you think, make sure everything aligns still with yourself, and make your decision and live with it. Yeah, I mean, I think that happens to every one of us and most people is you start to put too much weight on what other people think and on other people, like almost dictating parts of your life. And, and I got to tell you, it fucks you up. I'm going to tell you another story. Uh, I lost my business years ago, four, five, seven, 15, 17 years ago. And I was trying to figure out what to do for my next business. And I made some really cool, large items. And from being in that business, I said, I know where I can take this and take this business and go to a whole new business that no one's done and do some really cool things. So I went to a friend of mine who's my lawyer and I told him about it because he's also one of my best friends. Mm -hmm. And I said, this is what I'd like to do. And he looked at me and says, dumbest idea I've ever heard. Now, he doesn't have the vision that I had with it. He didn't ever think. And then, so I went back to New York and I went to a place called Hudson Yard. And I saw the invention that I wanted to do. And it was in real time at Hudson Yard. And I was furious. I was mad. I was heartbroken. I was affected. I said, this is, my, this is what I wanted to do 17 years ago or 15 years yep. ago. Yep, yep. And this is where I was, and I knew it was a business, and I knew it, and, and I can see it in other places and other things. I go, I didn't follow my heart. Follow your heart. Trust yourself. Don't let people talk you out of stuff. Let them give their concerns, process their concerns, find the answer to their concerns in your mind, but follow your own heart. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, even if you fail, it doesn't work. At least you did it. You tried. Exactly. So there you go. Perfect. Okay. That is what I have, but there is one more. One more. But this one more is not going to happen here on YouTube. Oh, This no. one more is going to be on audio only. So right. Spotify, anywhere you can listen to the audio. We have a write-in from a person that is not in their hometown anymore. They're in Paris for their masters and they're having some very interesting problems in Paris. So I would say definitely go listen to it because it's a great one. That's right. Uh, so this is where we stop for here. We will be doing another one and we just actually launched our Patreon and we're going to be doing some exclusive things there. We're starting with some bonus stories. And so we will have one for that to get that kicked off. That's fantastic. So look for us next week. We're, going to, we're signing out for this week here. And thanks for tuning in. And uh, don't forget, we want to have you listen to us on Patreon. And don't miss the, uh, the audio only one that's from our friend that... Uh, she, I believe she went from the Caribbean to Paris, and what a great story. So please go listen to it and uh, help her out, and I'm sure that you'll help her with the write-ins. And if, 
anyone's in Paris, I'm sure you'll write us in on it too. That way that we can make some connections. For sure. Okay. Have a great week. Look for you next week.